Hey all. Well, now we got a couple of projects. Like that one right there. But that's cool. We don't have to do too much to that thing. So uh, we'll probably be kind of doing a video on each one coming up. But uh, let's see where we're at today. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> So thanks anybody who joined me on the Fiero drive home. That was uh, a little sketchy near the end. And uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that thing. Boy, it is running bad right now. It's uh, it's uh, doesn't want to idle. Sounds like it's missing. <clears throat> Seems ignition rev related to me because it's just like dumping raw fuel out the tailpipe. So uh, actually joined a. Uh, Fiero Club website webpage, Denix Fiero the other day, and uh, kind of get a little a little tech advice from other Fiero owners, and most, a couple of them said it sounded like the uh, pickup coil in the distributor, which is like the one part I didn't order for all the tune-up stuff I ordered. So I went ahead and <clears throat> spent another twenty bucks, ordered that, and uh, when it gets back, when it gets in here. Hopefully this weekend we'll do a full tune up on that thing, get it running right. I'll pull the headliner out of it, um, do a pressure test on the AC, see where that's at. And uh, besides that, I, I don't think this is going to turn into a big overblown project. So, um, but we'll do some videos on you know getting a 36 year old car ready to ready to be a daily driver and what that takes, and then. If it's like every other project, I'm sure it's gonna take more than what I thought it was in the beginning, but that's cool. <clears throat> but anyway, getting back on the Chevy. So I went ahead and got go to the roof the other day. Um, so we're gonna start on that. I'm gonna get that guide coated. And then I'm gonna get this side of the body guide coated. And I was, as I got the primer on there, I kind of noticed a few spots that uh, that I'm gonna have to fix already. You know, it was just hard to see with all the different, all the different colors on there of, of where the where the problems were. But uh, yeah, it's just the way it goes. So I'm gonna get on this. We're gonna get on this side um, and uh, keep moving forward. So all right. Well, let me do a little uh, do a little sanding on this roof tonight work on this couple hours and then uh, we'll be at home all weekend so we'll finish this video up over the weekend and and uh, see how far we get with this thing I'm, I'm hoping to kind of I need to work on that other car too it'll be a separate video but I'm hoping to get the roof sanded and a, a good portion of this side sanded this weekend all right so let's see what we got Alright, so not gonna get too crazy tonight. So we got half the roof sanded. And I uh, did it with some 180, some 180 and then some 320. And then just took the 180 and went around in the window jams and the door jams. I'm not gonna uh, 320 that. But uh, so I think I said this before the uh, changing that filter, putting that new filter. Uh, set up on that air hose and then using that little filter on the gun really fixed whatever was going on so because this primer ended up once it dried it looked really nice and laid out smooth so i'm pretty happy with that so uh that's about all i'm gonna do tonight get back out here probably tomorrow night and over the weekend but i'm happy i mean it it uh, sanded out good feels really smooth I got one little spot I started to get some rub through there and stopped and it may take a, just a little bit of primer, spray can primer, just fog that and hit it again. Just, but uh, I might not, it, it feels fine. So, all right, so, uh, and I'll tell you what, this dry sanding technique is, is killer. I wish I'd have 
wish I'd have done this years ago. I'm sure wet sanding is still good for some applications, but and for what I'm doing, it is so much faster and comes out just as nice without the sloppy mess everywhere. All right, so that's it for tonight. Let's pick this back up tomorrow night. All right, morning, everybody. Kind of getting back to this. <clears throat> So uh, we're going to do some more sanding on this thing today. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in a position where I got two projects going right now, which I didn't know that I really wanted to do that. But um, <clears throat> my, my plates on my van, my minivan, are up at the end of August. So um, I didn't want to renew it. I wanted to get, you know, that four cylinder to drive to work to cut back on my gas consumption. So got the Fiero, so I've got, today's the 16th, no, today's the 13th, i got about six weeks to, to get that car running and driving right, um, I want to get the air conditioner working, and I want to get the headliner changed, so I've got, um, ordered a bunch of parts, a bunch of them are here, some over there, more still coming, um, to do the full tune up and to do all the stuff I wanted to do to it. So <clears throat> uh, I'm going to kind of make a separate video series on that, but uh, I'm going to wait until all my parts get here before we start on that thing. But in the meantime, we're going to keep sanding on this. So um, we're going to try to get the, I'm going to try to get a lot going on this today. I want to get the other half of the roof that just, it didn't take that long the other day, really. I, less than two hours I had that side of the roof sanded. So we're going to get the other side of the roof. And uh, we'll guide coat this side and we'll start sanding on this side. And I know, I know I've got some things, some little things to fix on this side. So guide coat's going to kind of tell me what those are. So we'll find that can of paint. We can do that right now. Sprayed it on the roof the other day. Now, where did I set it? There it is. And I just used cheap satin or flat black when I'm doing guide coat. Whatever Walmart's got or the dollar store's got. Or... And uh, it works pretty good. So, And I just kind of fog it on there not worried about the post because it's um, it's got uh, trip like a cap chrome cap goes over that you're not going to see it and I'm just going to do it like that this dry good and then we'll uh, start sanding this this car has been a lot of fun and I'm but I will be glad to get it on the road and get it running I'm kind of one of these people with a short attention span and I get Get a little bored with one project after a while. I just want to get it done. <clears throat> you know, you do the, you kind of do that fun stuff of changing it to a two door and the kind of the different stuff you don't do all the time. And and uh, I, I like the metal work and the welding and but man, when it gets to the body work and this stuff, I really gotta just, I either got to force myself to do it. And if I don't, I know the car will end up sitting and eventually I will get bored with it and probably sell it off as an unfinished project and I don't like doing that. I haven't done that in a long time. I've been, I used to do that all the time, but I've been pretty disciplined about not doing that the last several years. And I might get them done and then drive them a little bit and sell them off, but I Nine times out of ten, I do get them done. So, all right. So just like that, fog it on there.
we'll let all that dry um, and uh, we'll get to saying it on that um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna work on the other side of this roof let's see what it looks like right now I think I already yeah. so I did that side and I kind of did some of the back so I don't even have the whole side to do so we'll get some 180 on a block and we'll hit that get that knocked down and then we'll get the uh, out to do that. I'm going to show the actual sanding part, and that's it's boring watching somebody sand, you know. Okay, so let's uh, see what we got. We'll check back shortly. I thought I'd show a little more detail on this. So I uh, I did all my 180 sanding first, and I, so I took my block, went over the whole roof. Which one did I use? This one. Use that long one there. Went over the whole roof, kind of got all the big flat parts I could get. And then I used a little smaller block. Got some of the flatter parts, the big, you know, the big one was wouldn't wouldn't get to. So we used those two, and then you know there's just a lot of people will tell you not to sand by hand, but there's just a, some spots you just can't help it, you know. Like, you know, like down in here on these little flats. I mean, that looks completely flat, but it's got a little bevel to it. And this drip rail and up in these edges. So, and then like down in this little rounded edge there, you know, you just can't. Gonna take my paper, fold it over into a little. I don't want to put pressure on it with my finger, but and I'm not hitting it, not doing it real hard. Just kind of knock that guide coat out of there. You know, and then you run into spots like you got a curve here and a little curve around here. You just there's nothing you can do except get in there with your fingers. You know, you just. You don't want to do it on long flat panels because you can dig finger marks into it, you know, from the pressure of your sandpaper. So like if I want to do something around this little curve, usually what I'll do is do this down that curve. I'm going to scrub it. And I'm not trying to get all the guide coat off with this. I'm just trying to knock it down and get it ready for the the 320 is gonna get the guide coat off. So then I went through and I got all my channels, which I'm, that's just getting 180 because you're not gonna see that. I'm just kind of knocking the roughness off the primer. You know, back into here, this channel here is, it's got a big chrome strip that bolts into this whole channel that your, um, the top of your glass, your glass goes into. So, you know, all that's not going to be exposed. We <clears throat> sand it all in this channel. Yeah. So for me, I just got to kind of get in the zone when I'm sanding because it's, and this repetitive boring stuff, my brain is just not built for that kind of thing. And it's easy for me to give up, you know, and, and get frustrated with it. So you just got to kind of divide like like we did divide it into sections you know i got that half of the roof done okay i'm happy that's a, that's a little project and it's done same thing on this side we're going to get this part done and that's a little project i'm going to be happy <clears throat> i'll be happy when that's done <coughs> so for me it's important that not to give up on these projects when i when i say i make up my mind and i say i'm going to do something it's important to me that I do what I'm going to say, you know, not just in car stuff and in all of life stuff. There was a, a time in my life where I was probably one of the most unreliable people there was. And if I told somebody I was going to do something, you could pretty well guarantee that it wasn't going to happen, that I wasn't good to my word. So, um, you know, I, I, I that's a that integrity is important to me it, it took a long time to get over that to get to where i knew 
I was an honest and reliable person and if I if I said I was going to do something that other people could count on that I was going to get it done which also leads to be thoughtful of what you say you're going to do you know if you if, if you tell somebody you're going to be there at a certain time be there at a certain time don't be one of those chronically late people you know that's infringing on other people's time you know you want to be somebody that can be counted on you want to be somebody that's reliable you want to be somebody that behind your back people are saying you know he said or he said or she said she's going to do this and she's going to be here that uh you know there's there's no stress on them that they know they can count on you they know you're an honest person and you know they know you you're you're a person of your word and a person of integrity and that's a that's a big deal it's, it's a big deal so there's your little uh social tip for the day all right so instead of doing what i say i'm gonna do now i'm gonna get out the other paper and hit this some more so uh, all right let's see what it looks like when we get this side done i'm pretty happy with that that took right at just a little bit over an hour so you know, once I got, once I got all the flat areas and I start working these areas, like this thing has a lot of body lines. Like it's got a line there, and then you go down this flat, which isn't really flat. Then you got another body line there, and you know this little swoopy body line. So, like I said, you got to get that by hand. So you know, I'll sand in there a little bit lightly, blow it off, and uh, check it. Make sure the guide coat's gone. Kind of being cognizant of where the trim is going to go back on that I don't have to uh, have it perfect in those spots. But, uh, I mean, it looks good. I'd paint that roof. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on this panel here. Now, you can already see, like this. You can feel that a little. I can feel that a little. We'll see how that sands out, what those were. There were these chrome pieces that went across the back of that. And uh, years ago when Bill had this card, I don't think he had the chrome and he wanted to plug those. So we welded all those up. So I ground them down and uh, welded them up. And you know, it's just like filling body, filling the trim holes. We may have to address them some more, but I'm gonna get the 180 out. And this is like beveled all the way across here. So I don't think I don't know if a long block is gonna do much good on that. I mean, I'll try it. Maybe we'll try the, the shorter block. <clears throat> yeah, see, I mean, there's really, there's just not a lot of flat area on that thing. Definitely not there. So I, I think we're just gonna end up using this on the whole thing. That'll kind of, form to it <clears throat> and then we'll just 180 this trunk ledge here um, all right so let's let's get going on this panel see what we got on there uh, I'm gonna start on the side I do need to fix this little dent I forgot all about it at, before I primed the car so you know tail light goes over that I might just put a little filler on that maybe a little of that a little of that metal filler just so it's a little stronger than the lightweight stuff. I don't think you can really yeah, you can't really get in in the back of that thing to bang that out so so we'll just fill that little guy and then we'll start down this side so all right <clears throat> well let's uh let's 180 this back panel and then uh, take a look at what we got all right so that's after the 180 <clears throat> and it, it's kind of what I suspected it would be. Everywhere I had a little weld, I had a little high spot. So I just took my body hammer, just took the point and went along and kind of dinged them down. Unfortunately, you can't put a dolly up behind that because it's double layered up there. So not sure how well we got them down. We'll see. We'll, I'll 320 it, <clears throat> then we'll... Um, 
<clears throat> when we get around to <coughs> excuse me doing the glazing putty on the going around hitting all those spots on the body i'll go ahead and hit those and sand them down and and uh hopefully they'll be down a little bit so it feels like it went down but i don't want to sit there and beat on that panel and you know end up like kind of caving the whole panel in because it's just supported there and there you know kind of sanded this channel i'm really not too worried about that you know as long as i get some paint on it you're not gonna see that so but uh that looks pretty good let's uh let me hit that with 320 and uh let's see what we got here all right so that looks pretty good <clears throat> excuse me so like i said i got a few of these high spots that i ding down that i'm gonna have to uh put a little glazing putty over but uh, i'm pretty satisfied the way it turned out so the the roof project sanding is done this sanding project is done so uh I call those two little projects complete and I feel pretty good about that. So I think we're gonna start back here and uh, what I'm gonna do is, let's see. I think I might just kind of go by body lines. I think I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little filler in that and get that dry and, and then we'll do, we'll sand this trunk channel. And we'll just go along this body line on top of that all the way through here all the way down to the door and that's going to kind of be my next project section and uh yeah so we'll do that and maybe we'll i'm not sure if i want to continue to go through and just do the whole top of the door i think we'll just kind of work on this quarter so we'll get the top of that done then we'll move down to the next body line do another section move down to the bottom do that section okay so uh i've been out here let's see what time is it. about an hour and a half so it's a pretty good accomplishment for this morning and we're just gonna keep going all right so let's uh Put a little buddy back there and we'll uh, get back to it. All right, so I've been sanding on this trunk channel and uh, just thought I'd show this. This is kind of some of the stuff you need to make a decision on on your own car, whether it's important to you or not. So like down here, I welded this patch here. You can see that across there. When the trunk lid is shut, you're not gonna see that. So do I wanna put some filler in there and make that nice? Um, I really don't care. I mean, yeah, when you open that up, you're going to see paint over that little well mark, but you know, it, it, that's one of the things that one of the little detail things that nobody is ever going to see that just doesn't bother me. And I don't want to put the time into it. Other people may disagree. That may drive you crazy, but, uh, that's just a decision you got to make, you know? Just like uh, when I welded this patch in. You know, once the fender is on, nobody is going to see that. And, uh, I just I spot welded it on, fogged it with some primer. I'm going to fog it with some color uh, just so it's protected against rust. Maybe put a little seam sealer around that thing. But it's, I don't care if that's perfect. You know, no one is ever going to see it unless you take the fender off. So you got to kind of make your decision of how far you want to go you know just just like with the paint you know i'm using budget price single stage paint um, that may drive some people crazy some people may be like wow you put all this work into it why don't you do a an expensive base clear uh, paint job on it you know that's well because you know i'm deciding how much labor i'm putting into it i'm deciding the things i want to do and you decide that on your own car so just a couple little pointers there, you know, you, uh, for me, I got to draw the line somewhere. Like, uh, I didn't pull it off the frame, you know, so that it's got the original body mounts on it. Uh, <clears throat> I did a 48 Plymouth street rod where I pulled the entire thing off the frame, um, put all new metal in it, sandblasted the frame, replaced everything, 
you know, changed it over to uh, rack and pinion steering, had an LS motor in it, later I had a small block in it. Um, and I mean, I did everything, every part of that car. And it took me years to get it done, and I had no idea how much money I had in that thing. <clears throat> but I just decided after that, I am not uh, equipped uh, shop-wise or financially to do that kind of work. Uh, I get, you know, I get uh, drawn off of it, and then it sits for a while, and I get back to it. It's hard to stay focused on something like that for me for one guy and uh, I just don't want to put that much time into it and money into a single project I want to you know get them done get them pretty nice have fun with them without breaking the bank enjoy them a little bit send them down the road start on the next one so that's kind of me you decide how you want to do it all right so now we're going to start on this uh we're gonna start on this quarter panel, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, 180 the top of this panel, and we'll see what we got. Yeah, we're coming along. I thought I'd show a little bit of progress. So this is what it looks like after hitting it with the 180, and then I kind of started working with the 320 back here. It's, I was a little worried. I was wondering if I should have taken the. Uh, long block with some you know maybe some 120 or something and gone over this skim coat of body filler first because there are some places where there are some scratches some fairly deep scratches but they're they're sanding out and uh, they're sanding out without getting into the filler so that's that's good um, so I kind of like the Seaswood primer you know the first time I used this on that 69 GMC, I did not like it. Uh, but looking back, I think the problem was me and not the primer. And just my my setup I was using, whether it was air pressure or problem with the gun or what. But but this this laid really nice and is, is sanding nice. So uh, Eastwood, if I said anything bad about the primer, I apologize. It looks like it's pretty good stuff. So. All right, so let's... Uh, Let's continue on. I'm just about ready to hit the hit the 320 up here and uh, work this side out some more. But it's uh it's looking good. It's sanding out, sanding out nice. Feels smooth. You know, there's kind of some little stuff in here that you kind of got you got like a little bevel here. It's not perfectly straight, so you can't really get the block in here. That's kind of the stuff we gotta work out by hand and this like no matter how you do this you can't really get in there that's a that's a place for some hand work too okay let's keep going yeah, i'm feeling pretty good about this is sanded out good i uh, went ahead and took the spot putty and just hit a couple little areas well, I knew where they were, so I didn't forget about them. But uh, no, I think it looks good. So I'm gonna go back here, and uh, we're gonna work on this corner. I need to to uh, get that filler ground down, and uh, got a little aerosol problem over there. I might be able to shoot on that, and then uh, maybe work on that. <clears throat> work on that section a little bit like over to here but I do want to do do this section next just kind of work my work my body lines so that's uh it's coming good it's uh sanding is not too hard I said I think I'm having to sand a little more than what I would have if I'd have taken some finer paper and gone over the skim go to filler but uh but yeah, it's cool it's working out all right, so let's uh, let's work on that corner and uh, see what it comes out like. All right, so that came out pretty decent. Got a little bump in there, but once you put the light on there, it's it's gonna look fine. So uh, <clears throat> just sanded that down. Like I said, you can't um, 
there's just no blocking that you know you just got to hand sand that all those weird little curves and stuff in there so uh, feels pretty good uh, fogged it with a little bit of this you know the, the filler that was there and uh, we'll just take some 320 and just kind of touch that up a, a little bit so I think we're gonna take a lunch break here pretty soon and uh, it's going good today I'm, I'm really happy with it so after uh, after lunch and a little bit of break we're gonna start there and uh, go all the way to the back and uh, see what we got so, all right I'll be back in just a bit all right we're getting there so I I started with this block and I went down to this one I use this one I like this round one because it fits in this fits in this curve real nice and gets all the edges of that got a few high spots on the filler which I'm not too worried about I can I'm gonna keep going and uh, this is all just the 180 so far I haven't touched with the 320 but we're gonna do that in a minute and uh, try and get this whole section done and uh, do that. I don't know if we're going to work on this bottom section today or not, but my arms are my arms are getting tired of saying it. So maybe uh, maybe cutting it off sooner than I thought today. But uh, we're coming along pretty good. I mean, we got the roof and we got that rear panel and you know all around the trunk edge and we got this top piece here and we'll, we'll have this piece done here and the little back piece. So that's a that's a pretty good day of work, I think. But, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get this, uh, get this piece done. And what I'm not seeing on here that I like is I'm not seeing a bunch of, uh, air bubbles in the filler. So, you know, like, like we had on the fenders, little nicks and stuff and, and, uh, pinholes. So this, this filler laid better for some reason, but, uh, I think it's looking pretty good. All right. So let's. Let's get this piece finished up and uh, we'll see where we're at. All right, so I made it through that section. And I did find a couple of pinholes. I'm gonna have to uh, put a little glazing buddy on, but not real bad. So I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Feels really nice, nice and smooth. And uh, yeah. So, about all I can do today, man. My arm is wore out from sand, so I'm gonna hit. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna hit some more tomorrow or not. This is gonna be it for this video. Um, supposed to have a lot cooler temperatures tomorrow, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking I might be doing a video on how to put a headliner in a Fiero tomorrow. Because the headliner came in today. I think I got some glue around here and it would be a, a nice day to pull that thing out and get that done and uh, even though I don't have a lot of tune-up parts on it, not tune-up parts here yet, we could we show a little video on how to do that. So I may end up doing that. And uh, you know, I was really hoping to get this thing painted by the end of July. I just don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I got two weeks left and, you know, at least a few more days of sanding on this side and then still got to do that other side. Uh, my buddy's actually, I talked to him, he's going to come over this week and, and try and get this side wrapped up as far as the filler works, so that's cool. But realistically, to get it, everything guide coated, sanded, go back and do all these little spot fixes I got. And the spot fixes I got on here, yeah, I just don't see it happening in two weeks. But, uh, eh, you know, August, I, I think we can make it. All right, so that'll be it for this video. Um, let's go inside. I'm going to take a shower, and then we'll, uh, we'll see what the good Lord's got for us today in his word. And then uh, we'll call it good on this one. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on today's video. And, uh... 
you know, I know all that sand and stuff can get kind of boring, but uh, you know, it's got to be done. So um, we're gonna we're gonna record the progress, and uh, hopefully you're getting a few tips you can use. And um, if you've got any tips to give me, I'm sure willing to listen and always happy for some advice. So just drop your comments in the bottom. And um, so uh, for today's message, um, you know, I, I talked in the last couple of videos about about my sister Julie passing away and we did her memorial service uh, this past week and um, I, was, I was very honored that uh, uh, my sisters asked if I would deliver the message at, uh, at her memorial so um, I, I, I kind of struggled with what to say because there are I know there were some people there um, who are, are probably not saved and, and not Christian and the you know the last thing you want to do is is drive people away you want the uh, um, when they're there and you're giving that message of remembrance of that person you want them to be able to be joyful and honor that person but I know my sister Julie and, and how much of a, a powerful face she had and that uh, the message of salvation was important when something that she wanted presented so uh, so I went ahead and did that and we will leave the results up to the Holy Spirit and uh, and so that's what we did but uh, I want to share a little bit of that message today you know I was thinking about this channel and uh, you know it was probably I don't know 20 episodes ago or more that I just really felt convicted to start putting this part in these videos um, um, talking about the Lord and talking about salvation and I um, you know it is so important in my life and I just felt like uh, God was leading me to use this platform um, uh, to give that message even though I'm probably not the most eloquent speaker at times but uh, you know Moses wasn't either so I just kind of try to be obedient and, and do what he says and let him handle the results so uh, you know, I had wrote out my uh, uh, my little memorial thing for Jewel here. And I wanted to share the last part of that with you after I talked about her and her kids and all that stuff and, and her life. I just said, uh, lastly, Julie would want us all to know the joy that she knew. She'd want us to know how much the Lord loves us, and as long as there's still breath in our body, it's not too late to ask Jesus into your heart to accept the gift of salvation and begin the journey of a personal relationship with him. You know, I think I think we get the picture sometime of heaven that when we pass, we arrive there and God opens or St. Peter, whoever opens his big book and he looks at all the good things we've done and all the bad things we've done. And we kind of hope that the good outweighs the bad so that we can be welcome into paradise. And, uh, but that's that's not how salvation works, you know, because um, we have all sinned, um, and Christ paid the price for our sin on the cross with his life. Um, all you have to do is accept the gift and, um, and accept him and ask him into your heart to begin that personal relationship with him. Um, I've shared this verse before. This is from the book of Luke. This is when the uh, when the two criminals were on the cross with Jesus. And one of the, uh, this is Luke 23, one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you were under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Now maybe we felt like we've done too much wrong all our life and we need to get ourselves straight before we approach the Lord, but as you can see, this, this man admitted that he deserved what he was getting, and this was a death sentence, so... That, that's pretty heavy that he was saying he knew he deserved a death sentence. So he must have lived a, a pretty, you know, pretty evil life. And so in just that minute, those last couple minutes of his life, uh, 
accepting Christ for who he was and recognizing him for who he was and saying, remember me when you come into your kingdom, which is, you know, just like asking Christ into his heart. You know, that that's all it took for his salvation. And that's all it takes for us to uh, begin that relationship with Christ and begin that journey um, in our lives. And if you feel like you've done too much, you know, too much wrong, and maybe you need to, you shouldn't approach God before you straighten yourself out. If you ask my sister Julie that, she would pull this verse out on you. This is Mark, uh, second chapter, Mark, verse 17. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Jesus didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. So God wants to accept you just as you are, and Jesus demonstrated this when he was willing to accept the criminal who did so much wrong that he was sentenced to be crucified. And Julie, we want you to know that if you haven't accepted Christ yet, there's still time. But it's not an endless amount of time. Remember the other criminal on the cross who didn't accept Christ. Um, he was not saved. So we need to do this while there's still breath in our body. And we need to do this. Uh, we don't know when our last breath is going to be uh, going to come. You know, you could drop dead of a heart attack today, God forbid. You could be in a car accident. Um, you could have some other kind of medical medical deal go on. Um, or the Christ could come back and the world can end today. We don't know. But we don't know how much there's time there is. So don't wait. And one more thing out of the book of John. Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. So I just want to encourage you. Um, I want to thank you for tuning into my channel, watching these videos. Maybe this is the first time you've watched this portion of the video. Maybe when the religious stuff comes up, you just kind of shut it off and say, I don't want to listen to that. But uh, I'm telling you what, whoever you are, brother or sister out there, the Lord loves you. And uh, he gave his life for you and he wants nothing more than to be in a relationship with you so that when your time comes, um, you can live with him for eternity in paradise. We're all going to live for eternity. Uh, it's all about location and you want to be in the right location so let's say a quick prayer father i just uh, thank you for today thank you again for the life of my my sister julie and the um, wonderful example she left for all for all of us and i would just i uh, thank you for this platform to be able to share your message um, and i just ask if there's someone out there watching this that uh, that needs you that doesn't know you yet that you would just soften their heart and um, whatever it is between you and them that you would just move it aside and uh, and let them know how much they love you and give them the strength to respond we ask this in the name of your precious son jesus amen all right hit like hit subscribe tell your friends tell your enemies tell everybody to uh, check into saving junk and we'll, uh, we'll do some cool car stuff and we'll do some cool Jesus stuff. So I will check you out next time.